Welcome to Russia, everybody. The UCI Mountain Bike World Cup has traveled over 500 kilometers from our first stop in Maripura, and boy, has it been worth it. You join us at yet another stunning location in Brazil, named the place where the sun is seen first. This beautiful spot will provide the backdrop for our elite men and women to take on one of the hottest, most physical courses on tour. And this is how they got themselves in the mood at round one last week. It has been the talk of social media this week, the track here in Arisha. We'll talk a bit more in the programme about its place in the history books of this sport. But for now, let's talk about the actual track itself. Step climb, which at maximum effort really is one big winch all the way to the top of the tree line here. Just over a thousand metres above sea level, then it swings back downhill at some pace. Wide throughout, lots of line choices. There's the pump track section, jump line, full gas, big jumps. Then around this lake where we've seen the more powerful riders bring it back to the descenders before a relatively short start finish straight with a bit of an S-bend run in to that line, should a sprint be on. And now it's green for a goal in Arasha, Brazil. Linda Indergan has a great start. So does Jen Jackson off the line. Jen Jackson leads them as they head into the first corner of the start loop. And we come up this climb, first lap. We just miss a bit of the grass and do a little road, a bit of a chance for everyone to just fall into position. But it was Jen Jackson who got the whole shot. Now we need to keep an eye deep in the pack because we have Luan Lecomte and Yolanda Neff too. Steger onto this flatter section of the course now. She heads towards the two gap jumps. Over the river she goes, and then she'll swing onto the flat part and around the Sulphur Lake for the first time. All the big names through the first lap safely. Meanwhile, at the front, Jenny Risford makes her move. The number one plate in the red and white jersey of the overall points leader. In the second place, there's Lecomte on the 17 Canyon. Henderson's with her. Can they bring this group back towards the front of the race now? And on the first lap, this steep routy climb caused absolute chaos and split the group. But this front group of eight now. Rizved Svila Blunk just on the back. England backing up her short track. But this second group just starting to come back now. And it's Lecomte who's driving. Risfids in second wheel, that ominous poker face of Jenny Risfids on the number one bike with a red and white overall points leader's jersey. Just wondering now if these, if these lead four may start to trip over each other. Jen Jackson fancies getting past Linda Indergan, does so. Yeah, what a circuit. There is Keller. Jenny Risfids doing what Jenny Risfids does in 24, just turning the gear. Sevilla Blunk then moving past. Jen Jackson, Linda Indergan having to grit her teeth a bit to stay on to the bottom. There is Anna Taubert looking absolutely yeah. superb. She's bringing Evie Richards with her. Henderson's there. And I haven't seen Luana Lecomte, so maybe an issue at the bottom of that climb has just cost her. Gone wrong with Luana Lecomte. Oh. She is off the bike and in some distress. We'll get you an update on that. Staff are with her, the team look like they're with her. Did she have a crash? There is Lecomte left to spectate. There's that canyon, can't see anything wrong with it from here. So, a bleeding, yeah, difficult yeah, to a see. bit of blood on the knee. So she but before that track, she was having difficult day again from last week. So, you know, the position was not great, under quite a lot of pressure to make the front group, maybe taking some risks. I tell you, imagine having picked her in your uh, commentary team prediction stakes. Hmm. That's uh, a death knell Steffi, for anybody. Steffi Haberly, oh. the BMC oh. team. Yeah, oh. they're going to have to run. She's going to have to run all the way back to the tech feed zone. Technical assistance. We've seen this in the other races, a group of three or four riders at the front. But it's Jenny Risfids who leads them. The overall title leader leads the race here. And Arasha. And we're just seeing slight differences in the same as we saw in the under 23 women. Is, you know, Keller seems like the slightly better climber in the group. 
and we see Rizved slightly better on the technical stuff, just looks like she's carrying speed a little easier. And we're just going to see people picking the parts of the course that suits them best and just trying to hit the front and just put the pressure on the other riders. Batten seems quite balanced across the course, as well as does Sevilla Blanc as well. Yeah, I think it's... As I say, Ollie, at the top of the show, if you could design a cross-country track for your land and F strengths, this would pretty much be it, wouldn't 100%. it? 100%. Yeah, very strong on the long climbs and also the technical skill, one of the best riders out there. Oh, no. Jen Jackson. Jen Jackson has had a problem out there. Looks like a rear wheel puncture for the Canadian national champion on the number 14 Live Factory Racing Machine. Oh, in the tech zone, getting a wheel change. No problems for wrist fits, though, out front. Rear flat, Nine. There is your race leader then on lap five out of eight. Jenny Risfids lead by, leads by five seconds from that woman behind her, Alessandra Keller. So Keller just putting a bit of daylight between herself and Haley Batten and Sevilla Blanc. But on this section, when Jenny Risfids is able to, yeah, to, to recover a little bit, and Keller, she has to push really hard to close that gap, and then the next climb of the first climb will start. Keller will blow up immediately, and yeah. uh, Risfids riding her pace and rising. The woman from Fallon, then Jenny Risfids out front. And especially here, that first climb with the six sacks, uh, a lot of roots are there too. It's, it's not that easy to ride it in a, in a group. So if you are on your own, oh, small mistake here as well for Jenny oh, Risfids. And she's off the bike now, so that could be that lead gobbled up if Alessandra Keller can get the gas on. It looks like Batten now taking up the charge. Yep, Keller shuffled back to fourth. It's causing a lot of problems this first descent. First climb, sorry. All the routes yeah, coming it, through, it getting looks like just Maybe the entry's changed slightly, Ollie. Maybe it's been dug up by the earlier yeah, races there's, today. There's two choices as you come in. There's a steeper inside line with some big routes and a wider line where you can carry some speed, a bit smoother, but it looks like that's starting to break down as well. And I think it's as they're coming in and they're, they're hitting that climb and feeling quite a lot of pressure to get the power down, that's when they're slipping. And then it climbs up through the gradient levels and then you hit this, the steepest part of the course and the climb up, a lot of pressure. Uh, a course like this on a hard tail bike yeah. would be so under 23 minutes. Olivia and Lesti, sixth place, hard tail bike, no, no drop a seat post. 182 beats per minute for Sevilla Blanc. Yeah, on Esti, a real a rider after your own heart, Bart, on the hard tail with a solid post. Not these days anymore. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not today. Not on this course. But I, I think the young riders, the young generation, uh, as a kid, they still start sometimes on a, on a hard tail bike. They, they learn the skills on a hard tail bike. Let's see if these routes can separate them then. Batten carries a load of speed into them, just having to cut across the line of Risfits then. Put out Keller. Here. Oh, Keller held up. Does she get in the way of Blunk? Not too badly, so Blunk maybe passed now. Lucky there, Keller just moved to the outside just in time so she could ride a clear line. That stretched them out a little bit. It's Batten a piling pressure. Risfits though looking super smooth, just like last week, Maripova, she just sat there like a shadow. And She's it just shows the importance of that sh short track gridding. Yeah, it all starts actually. Yeah, it, it means it all counts. It starts already in training, that short track, good start position. That's what cross country racing these days is. She's currently got the ninth fastest lap time you land in Neff, but crucially, her laps are getting faster and faster. So at the front, then, it's Haley Batten from Jenny Risfiz, the winner last time out in Maripura. Then it's Blunk Keller. Keller lose six seconds back off the lead now, so work to be done. And Sevilla Blanc seems to struggle on this first part of the descent. Last time as well, she got distanced by a few seconds, but then stronger on the second part, managed to close back up by the time we got to the flat section at the bottom. Just seeing from the timesheets, Neff now back into seventh, so the Ghost Train, Terpster and Kohler have got past her. I wonder if she's maybe just rolled off slightly ahead of the final stage of this race. Blanc looking good here though, yeah. you know. Cracking first part of the descent back onto the group. But the confidence of Jenny Risfets is incredible. The winner would look like it's going to come wow. from one of these four, but who it's going to be is anyone's guess. They're on the final lap here in Arsha. Do not go anywhere. Batten it's... attacks, batten attacks. Blunk goes with her now. Oh. Oh, Bl Blunk having to duck underneath that tree. Hilly Batten leads him towards the first climb. It's like the last level of a short, short track, track race. race. Yeah, exactly. Repeat from yesterday. Batten taking it on now. Not a smart move in my book. She's going to have to then, they're all on her now. She's got used up a lot of energy. She's going to have to drag them all across the bottom to the climb. Wristfeds will do everything to overtake her in the last bit here of the climb. 
And there's a bike length between them on oh. this last lap. And Arashah has a head up this multi-line climb. Both heading over to the rider's right. That's an attacking, putting yes, on the is. pressure. Really bad, then is pushing hard here. Wow. Oh, Jani Risfits just looking slightly less comfortable than Batten, if comfortable is a word you can use this deep in a race like this. But Haley Batten attacks now at the top of this climb. It's three seconds, four seconds, just going out over the top. She feels the gap is there. It doesn't look like there's much that Jenny Risfits can do about this. She needs to regroup, clips that pole on the way past, using every millimetre of the track available to her. Batten full of fights, Risfits looking a bit despondent. Haley Batten has taken this season by the scruff of the neck and is making it her own sprints on, leaving nothing to chance. Look at the speed. Haley Batten, absolutely incredible. The Park City Utah native, the 25-year-old, the specialised factory racing rider, heads round the lake for the last time. It's not that far anymore for her. Eight seconds now to Rizvet. That feeling she has. She won short track yesterday. Can she do it again? Haley Batten then looks over her shoulder and she will see the sweetest of sights. Nothing behind her. Haley Batten clears the grass on the asphalt. Haley Batten celebrates with specialised factory racing. Haley Batten is about to be undefeated in Arasha. Haley Batten, the class of the field. Haley Batten, a debut. Elite level cross country Olympic win. What a result for the American. What a final lap. One, one, an epic performance in a ding dong battle. Haley Batten, how does that feel to come out on top in the cross country and the short track here in Arusha? Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I have no words. Like, you train so hard all winter, but to put it together on race day when it's so tactical like that, I just had no idea what was happening. So to pull off, yeah, feels insane. Yeah, and for both Sevilla and I, this is huge for the Olympic Games this year. So I think, uh, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> pretty good day. Sounds like a private detective agency, actually. Haley Batten then leads the way from Jenny Risfords at the end of Arisha. Sevilla Blanc, Keller, Terpstra, Neff, Superb, Kohler, Richards, Courtney, Indergan in 10th. Two minutes. Just looking at the body, I was going to say English, the body Swedish, maybe. Just thinking what might have been. There was no stopping Batten, no. The second half of that lap absolutely blasted around Arisha. Keller and Terpstra 